you're going to be watching a screencast that's going to kind of introduce nuclear energy to you or nuclear reactions and it's going to go over radioactive decay. Before we actually get into those, I want to review the types of isotopes. You should have already watched a screencast covering isotopes and this was the last slide of that screencast. We said there are two types. We have stable isotopes and radioactive isotopes. The stable isotopes are those that have a balance between the number of protons and the number of neutrons found in a nucleus, and they're more common. Then there's radioactive isotopes, and these are, occur in the elements majority over atomic number 83 or above. And there's an unbalanced, so this is why they are considered radioactive, there's an unbalance between the number of neutrons and protons making them to be unstable. So bits of the nucleus, um, let's say, come flying out and this leads us to our nuclear reactions. They are also undergo radioactive decay so they will emit radioactive particles and we're going to focus mainly on nuclear reactions and what kinds there are and we're going to be talking about radioactive decay in this screencast. So first, nuclear reactions. Nuclear reactions, there's actually a change in the nucleus. So it's going to change from one element to another. And some of these reactions are spontaneous and there are others that require massive amounts of energy for them to occur. And they do release a massive amount of energy. So how can an atom actually change into another atom? So let's think about it. If you look at the periodic table, it's organized based on atomic number or the number of protons. So in order to change into a different atom, the number of protons actually has to change. This can be done two ways. You can actually either split the nucleus in half or even more in half. You can just split the nucleus into smaller nuclei through a process called fission. Or you can actually combine nucleuses together and this process is called fusion. So these only actually happen under cer certain circumstances. Some of these are um, spontaneously. Some occur in, um, can be made to happen and in, in, uh, excuse me, can occur in your nuclear reactors. Um, your nuclear power plants that we use for energy sources and this happens all the time in your stars so it powers the stars. So your nuclear reactors, um, nuclear power plants around here, your atomic bombs, you're talking about fission process. Whereas what powers our stars, our sun, would be fusion. There are three different types of radiations that can be released. So I said that they undergo radioactive decay and they emit radioactive energy or particles. And those particles are either alpha, beta, and gamma. We're going to go over each one of these in detail. So first, our alpha particle. When it is emitting an alpha particle, it is actually emitting a helium nucleus. So you have two protons and two neutrons that will be emitted. Here is the symbol. You need to be very familiar with this symbol. You are going to be writing the um, HE, the symbol for helium, with the mass number of four and the atomic number of two. You need to know this for when you go to balance um, equations that are go undergoing radioactive decay. The mass of an alpha particle is four atomic mass units. It has a positive charge. And this type of radiation can be easily blocked. Your clothes block it, a piece of paper can block it. It is easily blocked when it's outside of the body. Leading us to beta. Beta is an electron, so it actually emits an electron, a high energy electron. And its symbol, you have the B here, but you need to know this you have the electron represented by E, the mass number, we know electrons are very small, so it's zero, and it has a charge of negative one, so that is represented on the bottom. You will need to know this symbol, again, for balancing out your radioactive decay equations. The mass number, fairly close to zero, the charge of an electron is negative, so negative one, 
This one can penetrate through more stuff, so it can only be blocked with um, something as 0.5 centimeters of lead could block that. Leading us to gamma. Gamma is more of your pure energy radiation. So it's going to have a mass of zero. It doesn't have a charge or um, atomic number. It is zero. But you will need to know these symbols. So if we say that it emitted a gamma ray, this would have to be represented here. It has a zero mass. It has no charge. Like I said, again, pure energy. This one penetrates the most, so you need 10 centimeters of lead in order to block it. So leading us to radioactive decay. Like we said, um, in nuclear reactions, there is a change in the nucleus. It changes from one um, element into another. So there has to be a loss of or a change in the number of protons. So it's a process of, of ejecting or emitting pieces from the nucleus. And we're going to focus on alpha decay and beta decay. Okay, so types of decay. First, alpha. And you learned in that chart that the alpha particle is emitted, and that's basically a helium nucleus. Again, you need to know this represents an alpha so that you can then later balance the equations like the one down at the bottom. So getting into that equation, when something is emitting an alpha particle, it means the atomic number or the number of protons is going to decrease by two and the mass number is going to decrease by four. So in this example, we're starting off with uranium. If you look on the periodic table, uranium has an atomic number of 92 and the mass is 238. When it says it goes, undergoes alpha emission, you have to have the alpha particle represented on the right side of the arrow. So 4, 2, and the helium. And what you're going to notice is the mass number decreased by 4, so changing it to 234, and the atomic number decreased by 2, changing it to 90. Once you know it's 90, you will then look on the periodic table to figure out what symbol it is or what element it turned into, so thorium it turned into. So that would be TH. Now, how do you know if you did this right? If you look, the mass number on the left side of the arrow for uranium is 238. That number has to equal the two numbers that are added together. So 234 plus 4 equals 238. So the mass when we add them together is equal on both sides. Then we look at the atomic number. We have 92 here and we want to make sure when we add these two together it should equal 92. So 90 plus 2 it equals 92. This is your equation. It is balanced. So it emitted an alpha particle. Leading us to beta. Beta decay is the loss of an electron and we have this symbol represented here with the E representing the electron, zero as the mass, negative one as the charge. So that's how it's going to change the atomic number. So what you're going to know um, when it goes under radioactive decay, the element's um, number of protons or the atomic number is going to increase by one. So in this example we have iodine. Iodine 131 is the mass. And then 53, if you look on the periodic table, is the atomic number. Now we're saying it went through beta decay, so it emits an electron. So that electron has to be shown on the right side of the arrow. So automatically you know the symbol for the electron, zero with negative one in the E. Now we have to figure out what it changed into, transmitted into. So we have 131 as the mass number. So what plus zero equals 131? 131. So now our mass numbers are equal on both sides. We're going to look at the atomic number. We have 53. We have negative one. So what plus negative one is going to give me 53? 54. So 54 plus negative one equals 53. So the atomic numbers are also equal or the number of protons are equal on both sides. 
If you have any questions about this screencast, please make sure you have written them down and bring them to your teacher's attention. Conclu concludes the screencast going over, you know, brief interview of nuclear and radioactive decay.